So good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Hello to all the places where you are joining from. I'm really happy to be here. My name is Vlaďka Skopcová, and it's a great pleasure for me to share with you some ideas how to bring grammar and fun uh, into our lessons and, and some games and activities, which hopefully you'll find useful. So first of all, we are going to have a look at some strategies and activities which we can use uh, during our grammar lessons. And after that, at the end of the session, there of course will be some space for you to ask questions. So if you have any ideas for your questions or any hesitations during the workshop, don't worry, uh, just type your questions into the question and answers box, and then I'll have a look at them uh, after, after the webinar and we can discuss some more details uh, later on. So, uh, of course, some of you teach at primary schools, some come from secondary schools, so uh, we will always speak about how to modify those activities so that you can use them with your students, because you are the professionals who know your students best, and that's very important uh, because then you can bring them the activities in the way uh, which is the most useful for them and of course, which they find uh, the funniest and uh, most helpful. The main idea is that with grammar, we are of course going to bring some fun into our classes and lessons. So uh, I'd like to share a few jokes with you. Uh, of course, some grammar jokes, uh, because hopefully, uh, that would bring some fun to the webinar as well. So here is the first one. And another one. And my favorite one. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed at least one of them. But now, of course, I want to be much more serious here. And uh, well, it's definitely clear that with games, we want to bring some fun uh, to our classrooms, uh, no doubt. But there are much more reasons why we want to play games. So uh, could you think of any other reasons why you like playing games or your students like playing games and share them in the chat box? Right, it helps memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brings the activity. Thank you, lots of ideas. Thank you very much for sharing. Yes, of course, perfect. Uh, yeah, thank you, you're so active. So I, I would just like, in general, summarize some of these. Uh, so what you're mentioning with all the motivation and stuff, that's what we want to do. We want to engage students. As soon as you come to the classroom and say, well, today it's a grammar lesson, everybody goes like, oh, and of course we know that there are only a few of them who really do listen. But when we say, now let's play a game. So all of a sudden everybody's active and like not everybody mostly, but most of them are definitely active and they want to take part in that activity. Well, as we are teachers, we definitely want to practice new language, or if not practice, we, we want to revise, which is, of course, very important as well. And as you already mentioned, they don't have the feeling uh, they are learning at that moment because they are playing the game. And also with the game, we are creating some kind of context which is relevant for that piece of language. So I think that it gives them more opportunities to really understand how this piece of grammar works uh, compared to the situation when we are just presenting and showing them the ideas on our own. Well, last but not least, we want them to communicate and we also want the ones who are more creative rather than language focused maybe to show their creativity. So we might add some drawing and acting and uh, we want them to work in teams and of course to learn all those skills for the 21st century as we sometimes call them. So great. So here are the reasons and of course you named much more, uh, which are the ones why we want to play games. Uh, on the other hand, 
what can happen is that some students, some, some teachers also see uh, a few dangers in playing games, because we know that as soon as we start playing games, what can happen is that the students become very loudly. Uh, they sometimes become even too enthusiastic. And uh, then it's very difficult to uh, explain that we have to continue, we have to finish playing, and uh, we need them to calm down for another activity. So what I was thinking about was a kind of top tip things uh, which we can do before we even start playing a game so that it works in a nice way and as smoothly as possible. First of all, I would definitely mention seating uh, because well, one way is that we let the students stay at their desks. They might work in pairs and it seems like a great way how they work because all of them are somehow active because when they have to discuss something in pairs, perfect, everybody's speaking. Uh, we are happy because, you know, communication uh, is happening, it's perfect. But it's very difficult because we have to monitor a lot. Of course, we can't hear all the mistakes. Uh, it's very difficult to give feedback to everybody. And uh, sometimes it's just basically too demanding. So another way is that we can also bring them to the board, uh, which is, I would say, easier uh, in the matter of organizing the classroom, but it's much more difficult in the way that not everybody is active at that moment. And they are usually just a few students who want to participate and the others are just standing around. So both of these ways have their pros and cons. And uh, we always have to judge what we really want to get from our students. Then we definitely need clear instructions. The students need to know what they're going to do. And what I think is even more important is to check that they understood. Uh, because sometimes uh, I told to my students that, for example, I would give them a piece of paper where there is some kind of secret piece of information. And what happens that in a second, as soon as they get it, they of course share it with the others and the whole game is spoiled. So uh, it's really great to use some kind of instructions checking questions after that and to say, okay, I told you that this is secret. So is it okay to share it with the others? No, it's not. Okay, and then it's clear and everybody knows that they can't share it. So I really find instructions checking questions very important. Uh, because they make them think once more about what I want them to do. Uh, what also uh, is essential is giving them the idea of how this game is going to finish. Is there a time limit? So is it like that they have like five minutes to fulfill the task? Or does it mean that if we have 10 words to use, then they have to use all the 10 words? And uh, well, of course, is there any kind of reward? So, so when we finish playing, will they get some marks or will they get stickers? Or is there anything which would come after the game uh, that they can actually uh, use uh, for, uh, for some kind of advantage? Last but not least, uh, it's always necessary to mention physical safety, uh, or that running around classroom is usually quite difficult and dangerous. And um, I always discuss with my students what kind of noise level I expect them uh, to be at. Uh, so we either discuss that, for example, we can play some music, and if they are louder than the music, then it means that I'll stop the music and they should just lower their voices, and then we can go on. Or I sometimes use a bell when the class is really big and they would be unable to hear the music anyway. So we use the bell and the bell means that there's a, there's a well, like when you ring the bell is the, uh, is the signal for them to uh, actually, again, uh, lower their voices so that we can go on. So as soon as we have all these, I think that we can go uh, into the real grammar lesson and have a look at those activities which are there. So I would build the ideas on that kind of, I would say typical grammar lesson stages, which I think that we mostly use in our lessons. Uh, these are those situations when we start with a lead-in, where we use, I, I would say, a picture or a text, a short video. 
And from that, we go on to the presentation. So we explain our students the meaning of the new grammar, how we form it, whether we need to add something or uh, whether we have to change the words somehow. And then we practice some kind of pronunciation. And of course, the main part of the lesson where we practice the grammar. And we always practice it first in that kind of restricted way where we want our students to fill in some gaps. And step by step, we are moving more to those communicative activities where they speak freely and can just basically uh, enjoy uh, the, the new language on their own. So therefore, we are going to start in that kind of lead-in presentation uh, area. And of course, I bring, uh, I'm bringing two little helpers uh, who would be here with me for the presentation. Uh, but I want you, uh, or I would like to ask you to help me uh, because I, of course, need some names for my little friends. So have you got any idea what the boy's name could be? Tom, thank you. Okay, that was so fast that uh, he must be Tom. Thank you. Great. And what about the lady? Olivia, okay, thank you. I got Olivia as the first name. So we will have Tom and Olivia. Great. Um, could you think of the relationship they have? Okay, they could be siblings, right? Who would be older? Tom would be older, thank you. Yeah, okay, they might be classmates. You're right, they are classmates. Yeah, they go to the same school, to the same class. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, but the problem is that as they are uh, from the same school and from the same class, they actually don't know each other because Olivia is a new student at that school. And Tom, is the student who was asked by the teacher to show Olivia around. Yeah, she's a fresh fish, exactly. <laughs> and of course, as a fresh fish, she needs somebody who would help her with, uh, you know, getting all the things done, uh, meeting new people, uh, meeting friends, making friends, uh, you know, talking to new teachers uh, and all these things. And Tom is that good guy who will do it. Uh, but unfortunately, Tom knows nothing about Olivia. So he needs to ask her some questions so that he finds out what she would like, uh, what she needs to know. So could you think of any questions he would ask her to learn something more about her? Where are you from? Mm -hmm. Okay, hobbies, yeah, they are important. Hobbies, interests, age, yeah, sports. Languages, great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Pets, okay, great. Yeah, all those areas teenagers are interested at. In. Mm -hmm. Favorite subjects. Thank you, super. Right, so it means that what's going to happen is that, as you mentioned, uh, he would ask her something like, where do you live? What do you like doing? And it means that he will have to be able to use some questions in present simple. So when we have the questions, can we think about some rules, how we create the questions? So first, as we can see in our examples, we need the WH words, which would help us to ask. And then we definitely need the auxiliary verb, which would show us that we are somewhere in the present tense. But is it always the verb do which we need? Yeah, great. Sometimes it's does, right? And what's important, is 
who we are asking, whether it's do or does. So, well, with the, with the students I would ask, you all, for, of course, all know that does is for he, she, it. And then we can't leave without the full verb, which will tell us what's going to happen. And if necessary, there might be some extra words which we need to finish the sentence. Just to make it clear uh, on a timeline, when we speak about where does it happen or when does it happen, so then we know that present simple is the tense, oh, sorry, is the tense which goes somewhere around now. It's a kind of general, uh, general truth, uh, which is either repetitive or basically lasts for a long time. So using these two might help us with the students to create some kind of story. And I think story is something which always helps students to remember better. And uh, what I have with some of my classes is that we even keep the guys, like here we had Tom and Olivia, and you don't have to lose them after this first presentation, but you can keep them. And if the students really like them, so then they usually ask on their own whether uh, Olivia and Tom are okay and what they are doing. And at the beginning of some lessons, they want to learn more about their lives. So I think that it's always useful, especially for presenting new tenses and grammar to create these stories. And uh, the good thing is that you don't actually have to create the stories on your own, but as you ask your students, they will always give you lots of great ideas uh, what's happening in their lives and would give you lots of uh, perfect ideas what grammar uh, that you can you can show them with these uh, friends. So that's that's one of the ways uh, we can we can start the, the lesson presenting it. But of course, what we are more, more important we're more interested in is to go into the activities. So the first activity is actually a game where I uh, chose a set of verbs which are typical for present simple. And uh, I would ask one student to choose one of the verbs. Uh, it's very easy for the first one because he can use any verb he likes, but the others can't use the same verb anymore. So, uh, this way, I make the students to listen to each other, because if they take the same verb again, they have to create two sentences or two questions. So this is a kind of, uh, uh, kind of thing which they don't want to do, of course, so then it's easier for them or it's better for them to, to pay attention. Uh, so they pick up the verb, they make a question, and then I either give them a ball so that they can throw it to another person to nominate them to answer. Or if your students are too mature to play with balls, they can also just use names, of course. And the other person answers. And it goes around the classroom till they use all the verbs given. And uh, then that's the end of the game. Uh, I just wanted to mention here, uh, that sometimes I struggle with the fact that our adult word is a bit different than the teenage word. And I sometimes use the word when the students are laughing at me that it's, it's not their thing. Uh, like, for example, I still tend to ask them, for example, uh, about how often they watch TV. And they always tell me that nobody watches TV nowadays anymore because everybody watches YouTube and everybody watches the videos from Instagram. Uh, so I think this is just like the only trouble of this game that we have to think twice about what words are really relevant to their lives uh, and don't come actually from our life. Uh, Okay, yeah, th there's an idea that we can also ask the students to write the verbs on the board on their own. Yeah, which is perfect because they uh, they get engaged and uh, it's actually something which is relevant to their life at the moment. Great, perfect idea. Thank you. Uh, we are going to continue with a question game, uh, which is actually not uh, about present simple anymore. We are going to use present perfect. And uh, again, you can modify it to actually any tense you would like to. 
uh, but I pick up present perfect because I think that the students are not always really used to creating questions. They are rather used to answering them. So here I wanted to begin in the way that uh, they have to somehow get a set of questions. Uh, of course, we can dictate the questions. Uh, but what I like is that uh, we sometimes go through some old texts or listenings we did uh, a week ago and we find some questions there. Or I prepare them uh, some kind of uh, dis disordered uh, sentences in which they have to put the words back into the correct order and this way they create the sentences. So whichever way you like. We have a set of questions sooner or later. I created these. These they, these, they are prepared for you. So, uh, so especially like question number four wouldn't be, of course, relevant for for our students, but uh, but it's it's prepared for you as teachers. And in the classroom, I would ask, ask the students to mingle and ask the others uh, any of these questions whatever they like to learn about the others and just take notes. Uh, unfortunately, we can't mingle here. So I would just ask you to have a look at the questions and think about your answers. I would give you a minute to do it. Okay, so I hope you had enough time to answer at least some of the questions on your own. And now what would happen in the class is that I would ask the students to share some of the answers and the others would guess which answers uh, are relevant for which question. And then they would even try to guess whose answer it, this is. Uh, as we don't know each other, we would do just the first half. So could you share uh, some of your answers and let's try to guess what questions they match. Okay, so let's take yes, I have, right? Because Irina was the fastest. So which answer, uh, so which question goes the answer yes, I have to? One, great, amazing, super. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay, and four, have you worked for a long time? Yes, I have, cool, yeah, number one and number four here, perfect. Right, amazing, that was a tricky one, right? Covering two questions at one go. Okay, super. Mm -hmm. Then we have some more questions here. So I just scroll up and one answer is none. So which question can have the answer none? Three, 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 great. Okay, perfect. Uh, well, uh, I have 10 pages so far here. So which question is that? It's the same one, right? <laughs> Okay, lovely. And then there were some very long answers up there, so I'll try to find them. Uh, I talked to my mom, who I met at the cemetery. Mm -hmm. So, which, which question is this answer for? It's difficult to scroll down. Okay, five, yeah, amazing. Perfect. Yeah, so this is the way uh, with which, uh, which we can use it. Uh, and uh, well, of course, guessing whose answer it is, it might be, it might be lots of fun, especially in, uh, in the new uh, classes at the beginning of the, of the school year or after Christmas, when you, when you just use the uh, questions which are somehow focused, uh, for example, on Christmas uh, at this time of the year. Another thing which we can do is if we want to practice the, the questions properly, that we would give the answers to the students. Here I use my own answers so that we can easily see it. Uh, and we can ask the students to think about the questions which they uh, were answering at the moment. So could you still remember the question for the answer? No, I haven't. Yeah, it was the question number one. And do you remember the wording of the question? Have you been to New York? Cool. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Number two, a car. So what was the question number two? Yeah, what was the most expensive thing? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now we have the answer only two. Okay, that's the one about books. Okay, so how many books have you read? 
great memories, perfect. Uh, yes, 11 years. Okay, how many, yeah, how many years have you worked mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at this school? Lovely. And the last answer, not really. Uh -huh. Have you met someone this afternoon? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so we have the questions here, yeah. Have you talked to, to many people today? Yeah, that was the original one. But of course, yeah, we, we are looking for the form. Great, thank you very much. However, this is something we probably would like to do with the students where we are not really sure they, they know how to create the sentences. So we would basically repeat something what, what we have done before. However, we can also use the same answers for creating just very different questions. So what other questions, except for have you ever been to New York, could I ask so that I get the answer, no, I haven't. Okay, have you ever eaten sushi? Cool. Well, fortunately, yes, I have. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have a single UFO, UFO, yeah, that could be cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So I think that this way you might get lots of amazing questions, uh, which are covering lots of areas, and that could bring uh, really great uh, activities for your students because they would keep answering really various things. Uh, I've prepared uh, one of the questions on my own just to. Uh, bring again a bit of fun if you can get the idea of like which question uh, is uh, is connected to which of these answers. <laughs> yeah, number two, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I would expect some of the questions like these from my students <laughs> because this is of course something they are dreaming about. So they, they would expect these ones. Great. So, Let's move to uh, a kind of more creative or artistic activities, because as we've already mentioned, uh, we want to develop our students in all possible ways. And uh, as we know that all students are different, uh, some of them are really focused on uh, creating new things. Uh, they even might struggle with languages. So I think that this brings a really great opportunity where they can, uh, I would say like shine with what they are good at. And if the others are not really good at drawing, uh, again, it can bring lots of laughter. So this activity is based on the idea that the students work either in pairs or small groups. Uh, it's just because we want them to be as active as possible. Otherwise you can of course play with the whole, uh, whole class, but the problem is that, that usually only one or two people then are engaged. And the students always need to know what the key grammar is. So for a change here, we are going to use to be going to. And the task is pretty simple. The student has to think about a sentence uh, which has the key grammar, which here would be to be going to in it. And then their task is to draw it. And the others have to guess the meaning of the sentence. Uh, there's one rule, there can't be any letters or any numbers used at all. So here is my picture for my sentence. And let's see if you have any ideas of what I wanted to express. Yeah, she's going to play tennis, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, at Wimbledon, that would be cool. <laughs> okay, yeah, perfect. And then we can turn them into questions, like, are you going to play tennis? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Super. So if you know that your students are uh, kind of mature and they are, uh, they are reliable, you can ask them to think about the sentences on their own. 
uh, if you are a bit aware of that and you, you think that your students might come with, with the situation when they say, oh, I have no idea what to draw and it's too difficult and, and things like these. So then I suggest that you prepare them a list of sentences and you just cut them into pieces and they, they just take one sentence each and then they produce what's written on that piece of paper. And then everybody knows what to draw. And it's, uh, it's maybe kind of good support for the students who have never played this game and, uh, and would be easier for them. Uh, sometimes when the students are uh, too tired because of there's too much drawing, so we can also change it uh, into a mime game. Uh, so again, miming a sentence might be a case uh, where you you know that the students are really tired. Uh, they uh, they maybe had a math lesson before your lesson, so you want them to stand up and move and to release some energy. So there, then miming uh, sentences is a great fun, and it always works. And well, like especially things like going to play tennis is something which, which can be easily uh, expressed even just within the classroom. So uh, that's another way how to play this activity or do this activity. Well, uh, another one uh, is a kind of guessing game where I brought uh, a picture of my son Jakub, uh, who, as you can see, is just celebrating uh, his third birthdays. And uh, what I would like you to guess is actually the story behind the picture. So what has happened or what has just happened before the picture was taken, before the picture, picture is taken. So have you got any idea what might have happened before? He has made a wish. Yeah, exactly. That was a big thing. <laughs> okay, amazing. Well, you got it immediately. Oh, lovely, his mom has made, okay, great ideas. Yeah, but the, the first idea was actually the right one because what happened was that when he was one and two, uh, he wasn't able to get the idea of uh, making wishes uh, before blowing the candle. And yeah, as he as he is mature enough at the moment, uh, he was really uh, he was really happy that he could do something like that, and uh, and that he could wish for something. So that was a big thing. What's the best thing to to really wish for? Okay, and there's one more question. What's going to happen after this? You're right. That there was a big thing. Yeah, he, he was going to eat really, he was, he was really, he saw that he was going to eat the whole cake on his own, uh, which was a big thing because we wanted him not to eat the whole thing at one go. And yeah, so it was a kind of very, very diplomatic situation when we were trying to explain that it's not possible to eat all the uh, all the tiny little things, uh, decorations like like Marsha and the bear and, and the cake together, because otherwise uh, I think his birthday would be pretty spoiled. So so that, that it was. Great. Okay, so uh, I think that, again, uh, your students would have lots of pictures with them. Uh, they always have their mobiles. In the mobiles, they have lots of uh, things from their lives. And I think this is a kind of nice activity uh, when they basically pick up a picture and then uh, in a couple or so in a pair or in a little group, uh, the others have to ask uh, or, or guess what has happened and then what's going to happen because only the owner of the picture knows what was really the story about. And again, I think storytelling is something which always helps us remember things. And uh, as, as of course research says, uh, uh, all the emotions which are brought to the activities and are brought to the classroom, <clears throat> they just enhance learning. So uh, any like good memories from, from the owner of the picture and then some, some funny stories he would tell to the others uh, that are connected with the picture uh, would help to use lots of grammar. Like here it's obviously focused again on tenses like uh, 
present perfect and to be going to, but you can always uh, change this uh, depending on uh, what levels of students you are teaching. So of course there could be lots of, um, uh, for example, indirect speech, or there could be questions uh, like what were you do? Uh, well, sorry, what would you do if you were in that situation? So we could even use uh, some conditionals in that case. And uh, uh, it's just like the sky is the limit and whatever you need uh, and whatever your students like, uh, I think could be put together with such an activity. Well, as we are uh, slowly approaching to the uh, end of my presentation and are getting closer to your questions, uh, I would like to share a few concepts or ideas which would give you an opportunity to play a game anytime, anywhere, without any extra preparation. Uh, so that when you have maybe like five minutes at the end of the lesson, or on the other hand, you want to open the lesson with something pretty quick, uh, which you don't have to prepare for. So, so, so these activities are the ones you can always use and uh, bring again, uh, lots, of, lots of fun in, into the classroom. So Sharks uh, is a game which might be similar to, to the game of Hangman, uh, but as the concept looks a bit different, so, so the students like it. Uh, and it works in the way that you divide students either into groups or they work in pairs. Uh, this actually goes back to what we discussed at the beginning, whether it's a good idea to take the whole class to the board or whether you prefer them to sit at the desks and work in pairs. And uh, the main thing is that you prepare kind of two staircases uh, which lead to the shark. And uh, the students, either the groups or the individuals, they are uh, beginning uh, at the top of the staircases and uh, you as a teacher are giving them some either tasks or questions. Uh, one more thing you have to consider at this situation is if you want them to say the answers aloud or if you want them maybe to write the answers down because then, especially when you are teaching students who are very competitive, it's maybe better to ask them to write the answers down. Otherwise they start fighting in the way that somebody was uh, just uh, repeating anybody else's answers. So uh, again, as you, you know your students best, but this is, this is something to consider. And let's say that we would play this game uh, to revise irregular verbs. So I would say the verb go, and I would ask my students to create the past uh, form. And they either knew that it went or they didn't. And then what might happen is that if may, they make a mistake, they would just move one step lower. Uh, in the next round, I would use another verb. So I would continue with, let's say, drive, write, read, and so on and so forth. And of course, the trouble is when the student or the whole group is moving closer to the shark, because the ones who ended up first in the water, they're eaten by the shark, the others are the winners. Uh, here are just a few ideas which this game could be used with. But as I've mentioned, anything which you like might be modified uh, for this activity. Uh, you can ask them to create comparatives and superlatives. Uh, they can just distinguish between much and many. So these would be this kind of like fast ways of how to play this game. On the other hand, it could be even turned into a translation game. So uh, let's say that the students are either at the board or sitting at their desks. They have a piece of paper or the board to use. You give them a sentence in Czech and they translate it into English. If it's correct, well done, they're staying where they are. Well, supposing it's incorrect, then they are moving that one step lower. So uh, all, all the, uh, of course, all the forms are fine. And uh, as soon as the students learn how the game works, it's, it's a really very, very fast thing to do. Another one, uh, which is also very kinesthetic, uh, 
is uh, is an activity which I'll call four corners, uh, but it's in I that it's in it's it's in commerce because uh, it doesn't always have to be four corners. It could be fewer corners first of all, and then uh, I uh, I didn't want to uh, say that this is the activity which we use especially for cooperative learning. This is this is just a game. Uh, and uh, this game, uh, in the first case, being really a kind of four corner game, is done in the way that that square represents your classroom or basically the area where the students uh, can move. And the students at the beginning are all standing in the middle of that area. And in each corner of that room area, there is a big piece of paper on which there is written one of the letters, A, B, C, D. After that, uh, when everything is organized and prepared, you can show the students the question uh, on the board, like Jim never something to school. And the students are to decide whether it's A, B, C, or D form which creates a correct sentence. You give them like five seconds, 10 seconds, again, depending on what level of students you're teaching at the moment. And after that time, I usually give a kind of clear signal. So I either ring the bell or just clap my hands to show them that now that's the time where they can move to either of those corners. And then uh, we, check on whether the corner was right. There are always a few students somewhere that they shouldn't be. So there's time to think about the uh, reasons for the correct answer and uh, to uh, basically explain why they, for example, made a mistake. Uh, I really like this game because uh, when the students are tired and they need to move a little bit, uh, it really energizes them. And then uh, it's amazing uh, in the way that you exactly get the feedback on how well they got the new language. So you immediately know whether they are moving to the right direction or whether they are just watching the others to find out where they should go. And I think in this way, it, uh, it is very useful. If uh, you know that your students need more time to think or when the when the grammar is too difficult challenging so then uh, it can also be done in the way that first they are given the sentences they can just on their own in their desks things think about the right answers and after such kind of time limit they can come to the middle of the room and you play this game just in the way that you are checking the answers. They don't have to think about uh, the answer anymore, but they just check what they've written uh, when they were working on their own. Well, moving from four corners to three corners, uh, of course, is the same concept, just another idea of how we can use it uh, in, in a grammar lesson. Uh, we, can, uh, we can easily practice prepositions uh, using this game just writing the prepositions on the pieces of paper so that they can uh, quickly round around to find the right ones. Or it could be adapted just to two corners if you want to think about much and many. Some other ideas would be that you might read a sentence and they have to decide whether the sentence is correct or incorrect. Uh, it can either be connected with the grammar mistake, or it can even be somehow connected with the meaning of the sentence. Uh, it's great for practicing gerunds and infinitives because this is a kind of very tricky grammar. So again, this is something uh, which might make it easier, especially kinesthetic students, they love it uh, because it's easier for them to remember these. At the beginning, I will already mention some modifications which are always necessary. Uh, because uh, the activities uh, I, uh, I was sharing are somehow specific. Uh, they are prepared for specific grammar, specific kind of students. So uh, it, it, it would be really uh, helpful, I think, uh, if we had uh, some kind of discussion of how we can modify the activity so that they fit for your students. 
uh, I think that uh, it would be quite demanding for you to type everything in the chat, uh, but maybe during the time when we are talking about your questions, if you are interested, you can think about some modifications. And if you want to share with us the ways you would like to modify some of these activities, uh, I think it would be really great if you, if you wanted to type in the chat uh, the moderations and modifications and everybody would appreciate that. Uh, However, now uh, I am I'm going to thank you very much uh, for your uh, for your activity, uh, for your engagement. Uh, I would really like to uh, thank the uh, National Pedagogical Institute for hosting uh, this webinar, and I hope that you would find these. Uh, activities useful, uh, but as I promised, because before we finish, uh, I would like to have a look at your uh, questions so that we can discuss some of these. Uh, and uh, so, so the first one, I mean, I'm just, I just need a minute to read it. Okay, so the first question is about the prizes or some kind of award. Uh, which uh, would be given to the students. Uh, the place closely related with that, and I'm not sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I think it's an amazing point uh, because I think, like, one of the ideas is that we don't really want our students to uh, just compete. I think that we want them to cooperate like a group. Uh, we want them to be team workers. And it's not always about winning and losing. Uh, so what I like is uh, a kind of uh, way in which I try to explain that we don't always play uh, to, to win something or to be the first ones. And uh, sometimes when I play a game, I don't even give them any points. And when they ask like, okay, who was better? I say like, it's not about who's better. I think we are all great because we managed to go through this activity and you all showed us that you are able to communicate and you, you were able to do these things. So I, I sometimes try to explain in this way. Uh, sometimes I try to award them equally. Like I say like, okay, you took uh, part in the activity. So you are awarded a sticker. Of course it works for the, for the little kids. Like it doesn't work with teenagers. Uh, uh, with teenagers, it's uh, it's something I want them to take as a, as a normal thing in life. Like, yeah, we are going to play, we are going to do it, but we are not going to say, okay, you are the best and you are the worst. Uh, we just basically share the idea that we are doing something what we like, what brings fun into the classroom. And I try not to award them in the way that I would say, okay, if you get, let's say 10 points, I would give you one or something like that, uh, because I think it's very, very dangerous from my point of view. But of course you might have your, your, your concept which, which, uh, which might work, uh, but this is, this is just my, my feeling about that, that I want them rather to, uh, to do kind of team thing rather than to, to, to think about who's the best. And, and of course to ask for the awards all the time. Right, so I hope that I answered in the way that you uh, you wanted me to, uh, that I got the answer right, uh, the, the sort of the question right, and I'm reading the the, the other one. So in four, in four corners, are there the answers written in the corners, or the teacher just says the answer options loud? Um, no, uh, it's uh, in the in the corners. There are just written the options. So there is either A, B, C, D, or when you have, for example, that much many. Uh, I think somebody suggested make and do, uh, because otherwise, uh, I think it would be very difficult for you as a teacher, because after each question, you would have to change the papers in the corners. So I think it's uh, easier for us as teachers to give them just the like area, either it's A, B, C, D, or whether it's much, many. And uh, I do it in the way that I say, for example, doing much, many, uh, I say, for example, uh, bananas, right? And they have to run too many. Uh, then I say milk and they run too much. So it's done in this way that we don't uh, really write the answers down. 
uh, but maybe it could be another step that the kids who run to the corner, then they, they have a piece of paper there and they write the word on the, on the piece of paper. That could be fun. That could be something like a running dictation mixed with this activity. Uh, right, so what to do if there are pupils in really different English levels? Of course, it's difficult, uh, no doubt. Uh, I think that these games are, especially the four corners, are very helpful in the way that the slower students would get some time to really think about their answer, because you would give them those, let's say, five seconds to think about the answer, depending on the question. Of course, if it, when it is much many, you don't have to give them so much time. Uh, and then if they are not sure, they still can kind of uh, rely on the others, on the, on the stronger students, and they can kind of copy. But I, I think that this copying is actually a way of learning. They, they, they learn from the, from the better students. And uh, maybe they are not so stressed because they are not writing it down, uh, but they are just like moving around the classroom and they play with the rest of the group. Um, when, when you are doing the, the group work, I think it's always about, uh, about your aim. Like if you, if you find it more important that the group actually creates a team and the, let's say, slower ones would learn from the faster ones, or if in some activities it's better to put the faster ones together so that they just like run in their pace and they do the activity very quickly, or you even maybe prepare an activity which is more challenging. And then to the other group, uh, you put the students who are far, oh, sorry, who are slower, so that they can enjoy uh, the slower pace and they can do it properly on, uh, like at, at their level and at their speed. Uh, and I think it's always about juggling. It's like once we do it this way, the other the other time we do it the other way. Uh, sometimes we add some creative things so that the ones who don't like uh, maybe English so much they they can they can use some creativity in that more. And I think this way we are kind of moving. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think this is the only way to bring some kind of variety into the lesson so that everybody is happy at least sometimes and everybody is like challenged. Uh, in their own way, uh, so that's it, yeah. Uh, and I can see one more or two more. Uh, four corners, pupus can use cards, ABC. Oh yeah, okay, right. There's an idea for four corners uh, in which uh, the students don't have to move, especially when the classroom maybe is full of desks or you have too many students. So they basically just have the cards and they vote for the, for the right answer. Amazing. Yeah, that's a perfect idea. Definitely, definitely. I would say the, uh, the advantage of the one uh, in which the students are moving uh, is that especially when they are tired and you, are, you, you give them the opportunity to move, to kind of run for a while, then they, they are energized and it's easier uh, to go on working. Uh, but in some classrooms, it's impossible and well, that's a great modification which you can use to, to play actually this game uh, in the way that you have the voting cards. Perfect. Thank you very much for sharing this idea. So thank you once more. It was really great pleasure to me to, to be here with you. Uh, I hope you would find the activities useful. Thank you for your engagement and have a great rest of the day. And I hope to see you uh, in the future again. So thank you very much. and. Goodbye.